Hi guys, uh, please, I want you to pay very close attention to what I'm about to say. Now, this is serious business. This has nothing to do with Mamba's Diamond. This has nothing to do with any promotion or anything. This has everything to do with you. And when these things come to my spirit sometimes, um, I just obey and do it because we don't know what, who is for or, you know, or what is about. Um, and and um, I just want to put this out for you to hear. Please, please, and please listen to this. Some of you might have heard me tell the story about uh, a friend of mine, Alex, many years ago. Uh, we were hanging out with a couple of other friends, and that night there was nothing we did not talk about. We talked about girls, we talked about uh, uh um, movies we talked about uh, drinks we talked about politics sports you know regular things guys would talk about and at some point in the conversation something you know was heavy in my spirit burden was in my spirit to talk to alex about god and i and i and i just brought it up i like where, where do we even go when we die like have we even thought about this and you know changing our life and all that and Alex looked at me with a smile on his face and said, Williams, please, uh, I'm too young for God now. I'm not ready for that. Now, Alex was 18 as of the time, and Alex had a wide life. Drink, smoke, party every day, he, he, name it. He, he was quite wild. So that night, I they were supposed to go to the club, and I was going home. So I, I told them I wouldn't join them to, to the club. You know, um, and I went home and I went to the club. And while I got home, please listen very attentively. While I got home, I took off my shoe and my, my, my socks and I laid on the bed. And just before I was about to sleep, I immediately got up from the bed. But I noticed that the person that laid down was not the same person that got up. I can't remember literally getting up, but I just noticed I was standing. And I noticed that even though I wasn't wearing socks, I couldn't feel the temperature of the floor. Please follow me. And I was wondering what was happening. My, my brains were going times 1,000 of whatever it is. If you tell me 1 million times 26 billion, I could tell you without even thinking twice. And while I was wondering what was going on with me, my emotions were running high. To my shock, I turned. I saw somebody wearing my clothes, my exact clothes and that, that was on my bed. And I noticed something very, very significant. Now, I have these two marks. I have a mark here, and I have this mark. Now, I've had this mark since I was a kid. When I looked at the one standing, this one standing didn't have that mark. And while I was still wondering who was on the bed, because I knew I was standing, to my shock, I noticed that the one on the bed had this mark and was wearing my face. And that was when it dawned on me that when people leave their body, it feels as real as though they were still alive. And I started panicking. Now, why was I panicking? I was a Christian. I knew that if that was my last moment on earth, I was not going to make heaven. The reason was not because I was a Christian. The reason was because we in this generation have learned to play Christianity as a religion. My friends, Christianity is not a religion. It's a way of life. You can be a Christian and still go to hell. If your path is not right with Christ, you will still go to hell. And while I was all there asking for forgiveness, crying, and yes, when you leave your body, your emotions become times 10,000 what you think it is in real life. And while I was crying and panicking and asking for forgiveness, in a flash of, an, uh, of a light, I woke up on that body. I, I opened my eyes and it was the body that was on the bed. And I went on my face and I went on the floor and I was crying. Now, that thing that happened was not up to three minutes. But when I looked at my time, I knew I was about to go to bed around past 12. I looked at my time, it was past four. So three minutes in the spirit became four hours in reality. And while I was still pondering what was going on, my phone rang. I picked it and a friend of ours that was hanging out with us that night, I said, Williams, where are you? I said, I'm at home. He said, Alex has just been... Uh, 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 in an accident he was coming back from a club and ran under the trailer and died on the spot he was drunk Alex last words to me was Williams I am still too young to serve God maybe when I get older 
And that now brings me to what I'm about to say. Why are you living as though you have monopoly of time? Who promised you 50 years? Who promised you 100 years? Listen to me, especially the ones they call Generation Z, the children of this generation. There is life after here. And the, what you did with your life will determine where you're going to. Don't let anybody deceive you with life is too short. Enjoy it while it lasts. It is the outcome of what you did with your short life determining your eternity. And let me tell you something. Your eternity is not, oh, okay, in the next 500 years you come out. If you die and you don't have a relationship with God, if you die and you're not born again, if you're not, if you get to hell, you're not going to be there for 5,000 years or 500 million years or 500 billion years. It's eternity. And the pain is not just a physical pain, but a pain of regret. There are some of you that are living... Your, your life is so fast as though you've been promised 50. Who gave you monopoly of time? There is somebody in this Lagos that does not know that he has just two hours left on earth. There is somebody in this Lagos that is moving from his office, maybe straight to the house, not knowing that he will not make it to his family. This is real. If you think you're too young to die, go to the mortuary. You're going to see people your age mates lying down there. Why are you living as though you've been promised eternity here on earth? It's time to wake up. And I tell people, it is better that you believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. Give your life to Christ and die and find out that it's not true. Than not to believe, live recklessly and die and find out that it's true. The problem with the second one is by the time you find out that it's true, you cannot change your decisions because it will be too late. Children of my generation, people of my generation, listen to what I'm saying to you. Because I don't just wake up and start saying things like this, except it's been led in my spirit. There are people that woke up this night and they are going to sleep in the mortuary this night. There are people that will wake up tomorrow and they are not going to see death tomorrow. So why we are believing God and we are hoping that he will give us the promises of God... Let us put our life together because the truth is the wages of sin is death. They can push you to keep doing the drugs, to keep doing those, those things that you might call it, think is fun. But the wages of sin being death is that the outcome of that sin will eventually lead to death. Give your life to Jesus. Arrange your path. Christianity is not about the church you go to. The Christianity is not about the, who is your pastor. Christianity is how your relationship is with God. Don't allow charlatans deceive you. And I believe this is going to be helpful to, for some of you today. This is what was led in my spirit to share with you this night. And my prayer is that the Holy Spirit, who reveals all things, will convict you and convince you to do the right thing this night. I am going to put a prayer, a confession, on my caption. And if you really want to give your life to Christ, and at least start the right path. Listen, I have never seen anybody that on his deathbed regretted knowing God. But I have seen people that on their deathbed recounted every bad thing they've done and regretted not knowing god you can never go wrong in knowing god i'm a living witness i'm a product of this so i'm not speaking from what i was told this is an this is my this has been my life and i'm saying this from the depth of my heart because jesus loves you and jesus has jesus wants you to be with him jesus wants you to have a good relationship with him thank you god bless you and have a good night.